welcome to the English Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. You shall address me as Reviewer Supreme, for I have the tinfoil hat that keeps people from reading my mind, yes. Oh no, who, who would want to read your minds? Who indeed, Sapphire Heart Song? <laughs> and yeah, joining us is Sapphire. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Are you going to read his mind with your spooky, scary Pokemans? Shh. Let's make the world figure it out. Ah, all right, all right. I mean, it, like, it's, it's not like you're going to have Abra or Kadabra in Sword and Shield, right? Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we be no Totera. I was going to make an intro, but Norman just crushed my feelings ever since Sword and Shield. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also, yeah, we got Tara. How, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I would have been in costume for the episode, but uh, nothing fits my size. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. So, anywho, besides the Pokemon jokes, uh, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 4, Overall Episode 200, Sparkle 7. In this episode, Twilight Sparkle and Shining Armor pit their wits against each other to settle a long-standing sibling rivalry, but they soon discover they are not the only competitors. Don't spoil it! I think he just did. Yep, pretty much. Yep. Although, in fairness, Hasbro did that first. Oh? Yep. I'll tell y'all when we get to first impressions. <laughs> and yeah, talking about first impressions, Silver, why don't you take this? Oh, that didn't take long. I know. Okay, what do you want to say? Because that's how we always roll. <laughs> I know, but I wanted to build suspense. Come on, Norman. Okay, okay, okay. What's the point of a high? What's the point of a heist move without a little tension? Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> let's go. Let's take it back a bit. Let's take it back a bit. Let's do this a bit. So, um, this episode overall is wow. Who, who would have thought that this little show that we've been watching hit episode two hundred? And I mean, twenty-two episodes long. Each well, each episode is twenty-two episodes long. So you got what, two hundred or two thousand, whatever it is. Like other shows, like uh, Adventure Time and so on, they have shorter shows. Like Ponies, this is an achievement to itself. Basically, you have four thousand four hundred minutes. Yay! Enough to fill in a lifetime, or at least uh, compete with Marvel's twenty-two or twenty-three movie. Ponies, assemble! Yay! Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, but still, but still. So, should we tell the audience at home a bit of a backstory about how this episode came along? Sure. Alrighty. So, long story short, uh, during the fall of 2017, uh, Big Jim asked the voice actress what they wanted to do or what they haven't done before for the show. Uh, what there was Andrew Littman, Ashley Ball, Tabitha St. Germain, Katie Westlock, Tara Strong, and they gathered them, asked them, like, okay, what do you want to do? Like, what, uh, what, what do you want your characters to do? And what has not been done yet? And they throw in ideas and whatnot, and this is it. This is the result of what that brainstorming has done. And, well, I think now is a good time to ask for some impressions. Silver. Well, okay. I adore this episode. It's just fun to watch. Uh, it's fun to speculate on why a heist story. Because of all the, of all the methods of all the setups, they went with the classic heist. And there's been a lot of speculation on that, especially thanks to Ocean's Eleven, <laughs> which, hey, Sparkle Seven. What a coincidence. I know. What was the first movie again? Uh, Ocean's 7, was it? 11. Ocean's 11, all right. You had Ocean's 11 in like the 1960s, which starred Old Blue Eyes and the Rat Pack, I believe. Oh, okay. Then a remake in the early 2000s, which spawned two sequels, Ocean's 12 and Ocean's 13. And then uh, Ocean 7, which was Danny Ocean's sister doing her own heist. Although I haven't heard a lot about that since the biggest criticism i heard is that basically the computer hacker does 90 percent of the heist oh <laughs> uh, well 
which kind of betrays the idea of a heist movie. But I'm very vexed at the same time, because while I adore this episode, I'm not a big fan of Hasbro. Oh. Because they did a making of video describing what you just said. And in the video, they give away the ending. Oh, wow. Really, no. They have a clip from the ending. Wow. Yeah. What the hey? It's like reading a, what, seven book novel or trilogy or whatever it is and just going to the back of the cover and seeing how the end is that's dumb yeah imagine imagine if what is it the seventh harry potter book uh-huh. hey kids come read this dumbledore dies at the end <laughs> oh gosh oh, that couldn't end well well it didn't for him <laughs> i just kind of laugh because you know we're all aware of the early airings that are taking place right now, yeah? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I already watched one of the episodes. As did I. But I just like, Hasbro, what are you doing? Now you're just outright spoiling your own episodes? What? <laughs> That's for us to do in other countries. Mm-hmm. But here I am go- going on about this quite a bit. I do, I do love this episode. I love the characters. I love the schemes. I love the presentations. Uh, I love... Everything except the 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 birds. Mm-hmm. The birds are silly. The geese. <laughs> All right, hey, at least it's like... not Canadian geese. <laughs> hey. Between this and swans, I'm starting to think there's a problem with Canada lot uh birds. <laughs> <laughs> They're right, as well. entitled as its people. Why, are they flipping? <laughs> They're not flippy, they're just becoming the bane of of Twilight Sparkle's existence. <laughs> Though this is all karma for winter wrap up when you squeeze that one bird. <laughs> See? It's revolution. <laughs> and so was probably. Viva the revolution. Alright, dude, alright. I beg your pardon, but I am I am part uh I am part Griffin, so I would also lead a lion and cat revolution, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, dude. So anyway, um, you know what? I I want to do something near the end where we compare, uh, the episode one hundred versus this one because I remember watching episode one hundred and liking it. But you know what? Let's just save it for the end. Like we we don't really need to go in depth. So anywho, Sappy, what do you think of this episode? Well, I honestly I didn't see the um. You know, the whole spoiler, like, making of thing. But yeah, I can see why that'd be annoying for some. Uh, I actually saw this when I wasn't vending at BabsCon 2019. So that was actually kind of fun, like, you know, having, um, you know, watching the episode with me and my boyfriend and all that. Oh, and, uh, Silver Pancake, Pancake Mage, slash Studio Princely. Anyways, uh, (laughs) I thought it was a really fun episode. And... I'm just gonna say it now, I liked it a lot more than episode 100. Like, Mm -hmm. I'll go into why that is, like, later on, but I actually kind of enjoy it. I think they went really all out for this. Alright, alright, alright. That and the meme. The meme was great. What meme? Did you just uh, say oof? Damn it. She did. She did. Anyways. Yay. Damn it. Anyways, uh... (laughs) The the hey, meme with Luna. Two for cursing. <laughs> the I know the that was one a bad with word. Luna. <laughs> yeah, Norman says it all the time. You never charge him. Anyways, <laughs> I, I'm talking about the Luna meme. Luna. Oh, that one. Yeah, that that short leaf meme. Norman, yep. how could you forget the Luna meme? Uh, was it for shame? That's right, Norman. You 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 be you be shamed. Oh, for boy. shame. Not that memorable. I'm going to get a a really angry old lady to walk you down the street going, shame, shame, shame. (laughs) Uh, She's just going to do that like for a week. (laughs) Uh, Before her heart attack. (laughs) But anywho, Tara, how about you? I really like this episode. It was very enjoyable. And I like you really see a heist episode in MLP and I was curious where it was going to go and in the end I really enjoyed it hmm. alright 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 and as for me this episode was a lot of fun the situation where the main crew have to break into Cantalot Castle and the absurdity of what 
Shining Armor did was just, you know what? It's just fun and silly. It's <laughs> the the whole setup feels. You know what? Let's. I'm gonna hold it a bit because there's more to talk. I guess. So anywho, if you guys have not watched the episode yet, pause here and go watch it first. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And well, here we go. We start off with the episode with our main leads, Twilight Sparkle and Starlight Glimmer, in the principal's office, marking papers, and Spike comes in and says, Yo, Twilight, look, I got a scroll and it has a picture on it. And said picture is a picture of a tinfoil crown. Twilight is excited about it, so is Spike. And Starlight, being our analog, as uh, what's so exciting about a toy crown? It's just tinfoil. You you can make it your own, whatever it is. Like that's just. But you can become the potato princess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess. It's not. It's not a half baked idea. <laughs> oh wow! Oh man! But wouldn't that make your brain mushy? Yeah, but you know, add a little gravy. <laughs> It's all good. Oh, the KFC well, gravy. Another thing good. too is that they can call them two different ways. It's either potato or potato. Who says potato? I don't know, I don't know Some, anyone who says potato. <coughs> no comment. <laughs> uh, what are you? Uh, oh, you will comment, Norman. I you I don't comment. live in your area. I call it differently here. What do you call what it? What do you call it? Well, I call it potato, but that's in English. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you... Yeah, let's switch to native tongue. What do you call it? Kentang. Yep. <laughs> so, anyway, a bit of an go. awkward silence the, there. Yeah, you know, right? Well, I... We're, we're like, trying to process it? the Malaysian. <laughs> well, I, honestly, I'm like, do I want to make a joke or will that come off as highly racist? <laughs> no. Okay, anywho. Uh, Twilight just explains the significance of said crown, stating that, yo, back in the day, me and my brother... We are very hyper-competitive. We like to one-up each other. And our parents thought that, hey, uh, why not we make this a game? So, a uh, child with the, what you call this, highest stars wins the crown. So, they do almost everything from sharing, what you call this, fruit to good grades to a lot of other things, jokes and so on. Question for all. Mm-hmm. Does this seem like a good parenting tactic? <sighs> not really yeah I'm with Tara <laughs> but it, it's a lot of fun because if you have hyper competitive kids and you want them to play fair uh, what do you call it like uh, have fun play fair this is a good way to do it it'll teach them to be competitive yet be a good sport about it but it can also but, but it can also how do I put this? Uh, make them into That's a... That's not a word! Up. Yes! Oh. <laughs> Sadie Bell's got... Okay. All right, that's definitely a language. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sadie so, so Bell's going to uh, do something about that, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on, did you really have to say that while we see baby Spike there? No. Yes! Please buy from Sapphire at BronyCon. <laughs> she's going to need to pay off the swear jar that she's accumulating here. Uh-huh. How much is in the swear jar? Uh, about two thousand dollars. Wow. So anywho, uh, like I was saying, yeah, it can make them really mess up in the head and whatnot. But uh, before, so sorry, so Twilight says like before she could win it back, Shining Armor left for military camp or whatever it is. So yeah, we we get this where. Spike and Twilight goes to Cantaloupe Castle to, well, get back the crown or something like that? I, I don't know. I, I don't understand. So anyway, yeah, they go. They do. If I could chime in real quick. One thing about this development I really like is that it actually fleshes out Shining Armor a lot. Oh, overall or just for the very beginning? Overall, because when he was first introduced in the song Big Brother, Best Friend Forever... Mm-hmm. A lyric that always bothered me was, we never had a fight. <laughs> And I just like, I'm the younger of two brothers. Now, you all have to put up with me for a few hours every every podcast. Mm-hmm. 
imagine how my brother had to deal with this for 30 some years mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you're a I love him de- <laughs> well and I love my brother dearly but we fought we fought because that's what you do in a family it pushes you to grow and gain an identity of your own I was worried if Twilight never ever ever had a fight with her brother did he ever you know push her to become more and up until now I wasn't sure but hey here's here it is here's this competition not necessarily hostile but competitive not a fight but at least still pushing to be more and to stand up for yourself true, true. I'm not gonna lie I mean, I kind of relate, but at the same time, my brother was eight years older than me. Imagine an eight-year-old and a two-year-old after I broke something and he's complaining to my mom, Mom, she broke it! Kel, she's two. <laughs> wow. She, I can yeah, the two-year-old two. broke something. <laughs> yeah. I can actually agree with this, too, because I, too, have an older brother, and back then he'd always call me names and whatnot and pick on me, and then... At the at the end, like later on in the future, when someone calls me names or tries to bring me now, I'll just be like, eh, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> oh, I mean, boy. I was kind of a brat growing up. So yeah, my poor brother, he was eight years older than me, put up with a lot of my crap. We didn't even become friends until I became an adult. How sad <laughs> is that? What is that for? What is that for? For the C word. Uh, yeah. I That's said the okay. What? N- now I'm confused. Not in my, not in my household, Missy. You got a potty mouth. <laughs> I think it's a no, nice really. Job. What did I say? <laughs> oh, boy. You said, you said crap. <laughs> was that for yourself? I now? was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But anywho, let's carry on. Yes, everybody can relate. Ooh. Yes, let's yeah, carry on with this. Uh, to talk C-word. about. <laughs> so, does every time Silver charges himself, that takes money out of my swear jar? No, it, it adds into it. You have to pay for him. Well, that's not fair. Uh... Hey, you're the one who's prompting this curse fest. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, so hey. that, does that mean if we all say something bad, it adds up to Safi's account? You know what? I'm going to say it does. <laughs> Son of a biscuit. <laughs> but anywho. Uh, oh Torterra, that was the whitest way you could have heard. <laughs> Come on. It's, it was a sweet way to do it. Who doesn't hey, like silver. biscuits? Hey, Silver, you found someone whiter than you. Congratulations. <laughs> I found the pasty Torterra. Let me go get my... Let me get my blue Pokeballs. <laughs> Whoa, keep those balls away from me. <laughs> okay, anywho. Oh, my little Celestia. Oh, wait, anywho. Spike and... Oh, you, t- you took Celestia's name in vain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that adds to my jar. Stop it, Norman! <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, Twilight and Spike, they fly all the way from Ponyville to Cantalot. The doesn't explain how far the train station is from here to there. But anywho, they're very excited and they fly all the way to the throne room and discover that, hey, it's the sisters with shining armor with the crown. And Twilight is not happy about him wearing the crown. All he really wanted was tendies. <laughs> she just really wanted her tendies. Can you blame the girl? Mm-hmm. Anywho. Shining Armor just says, oh, you want this? Sorry, I- I've been hogging it for a really long time, ever since I have to go for military school. Yes. <laughs> you want it, right? And, and, you know, married a princess. I think that's worth a gold star or three. Yeah. <laughs> and had a kid with her. Mm. I am royalty by blood. Well, Not I really. think one star should be removed, though, because he got possessed by a chrysalis. <sighs> yeah. I- oh, yeah. Father's like, you're like a princess? You could have married a queen, son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you want to remove a star you should just remove all of it because Celestia just got defeated by her like no no, no. what no, the, Norman that's that's two very different things that's not Shining Armor's fault even though he was the battery apparently <laughs> but Ooh, was that a case of assault and battery <laughs> <laughs> but anywho yes so the reason why 
Shining is here is because, well, Celestia mentioned that ever since Sombrero came back, um, we need to tighten security here in Cantalot, and so the best way to do so is to recommission our previous captain of the guards to do so. And Shining said yes to the idea and developed a security measure for the throne room. But before I carry on, Princess Luna said, we could do this ourselves, we don't really need somebody else. Yeah. Well, another well, thing too okay, is, let's... where's Flash Magnus? <laughs> He's too busy training of all, uh, a very special individual for the Royal Guard. Oh my. And probably drinking heavily as a result. <laughs> but, Wait. let's just... Oh, now I know. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I yes. stop waiting? Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. Let's just consider a few things here. One, Sombra was too far. The princesses got abducted by foliage right out of Cantalot and dragged to the Everfree Forest. But now is when you need to increase security? Now? Well, let's not forget, too, that they... Chrysalis even captured them from the castle and brought them to her lair. <laughs> there you go. And then there was Discord breaking free. Oh, and let's not forget the invasion of Candlelight by the Storm King, in which there were no guards on site, period. And also, let's not forget what? about T-Rex. Let's, let's not forget about T-Rex, who basically marched in there like it ain't no thing. What else? I'm sure there's even more we could do. Oh, oh yes. yes, Twilight... Br Twilight broke in to steal a spell to freeze time. And they were all like, oh, hi, Twilight. Let me get the door for you. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but now, one highly flamboyant guy <laughs> who has a really awesome laugh and a thing for dark crystals, he's gone too far. And they have to up their game. Well, you, you, just you, him. Well, in, what? In his defense, what? He, he did brainwash <laughs> Almost everyone in Ponyville and Cantalot. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's way worse than Chrysalis brainwashing the captain of the guard <laughs> in front of everybody under Celestia's nose. I'm sorry. That doesn't qualify for increased security. You know what? I, I, I got nothing to say. Um, <laughs> Can I ask you something, Norman? Yeah. Every time we mention about Shining Armor Cadence, why do you try to defend them? <laughs> Somebody has to. <laughs> There's really not much to defend Norman. I mean, he, he, there really thing. isn't. <laughs> here's the thing. If I don't, and nobody will, it's... <laughs> there just be the punching Unless bag for the show. Unless you go around zero, nine, two, <laughs> Like, I, I try to see the good things. I mean, I don't see much. <laughs> oh, 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 Norman, that, that might have been a pretty... Harmful diss right there. <laughs> okay, they're a cute family. That's all I can say. But in this scenario here, uh, you know what? I, I don't even blame Shining. He, he's just being paid for this. But anywho, yeah. <laughs> don't get mad at me. I just work here. Yep, that, that is literally true. But, but no, I just, I just... I laugh at the idea that it was Sombra, of all <laughs> beings, that was... Too great a threat. Okay, okay, okay. In Celestia's so defense, in season one, there's nothing. Season two, Chrysalis. So they up their game a bit. Uh, season three, nothing happened. Season four was T Rex, right? And yeah. the Plunder Vines. Yeah, we have Plunder Vines. I mean, it's just foliage, and Discord got it covered. No, I'm sorry. You've got to protect the princesses from that uh, Rule 34 tentacle stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Uh, we, we don't need Bubble Saw in here. You're you're get oh Bulbasaur! <laughs> oh wait, you're gonna does... make his Bulbasaur? Can Terra do that? Bulba, Bulba. Oh Bulba. my! Okay, now <laughs> I hate everything right now. I will never look at that ever again in the same way. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, what, 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 you saying? At... You saying you got a Bulbasaur at me? Oh well. <clears throat> You know, I would say something, but I don't know if I should say it. No, Just no. do it. Say it. Oh, uh, it involves a squirtle. Oh, God, no. <laughs> well, I've heard all those jokes. <laughs> uh, Even the hydro pump? <laughs> yep. Like uh, video game cats? 
Oh, well. It's been a while since I heard them. But anywho. Uh, where was I? I'm just... <laughs> You were tr- you were asking why th- why on earth did I ever invite Silver Quill to take part in this show? <laughs> why is he doing this to me? I hate him so much. No, no, no th- that's far away from mine. Like I'm just remembering where are we going to talk. About? Oh yeah, this one. Oh boy. And, and then Safi's like, oh Bulbasaur. <laughs> There's a Bulbasaur spot in my heart. I really uh, hate you right now. Go in the side, Bulbasaur Sama. No, uh, not this again. Why am I friends with you again? <laughs> Nani? Oh, but wait, who? As we carry on. <laughs> oh, I carry on, all right. <laughs> carry on, uh, my wayward side. Yes. So, anywho, um, uh, so anywho, Shining says, "Okay, you, the crown is yours if you can take it, but you have to go past my security measures, and the security measures are extreme. Remember way back when when we destroyed Crusader's crown? Yeah, I us." Um, Stars will to create an enchantment for the palace so nobody can teleport in. And then I install crazy fans. Yep, crazy fans all over the place so no flying creatures are able to infiltrate the castle. And you know that one uh, secret entrance to the palace? Yeah, we, we blocked it up. We blocked it up. And we doubled the security of the palace with more guards. Yes, more guards. Then... Now, if you want... Cre- if you want crazy fans, all you have to do is get the ponies from uh, uh, Fame and Misfortune. <laughs> that would deter anyone from ever coming near this show. I mean, the castle <laughs> again. Actually, I, I got something to ask now. I'm kind of winding back here, but no, I, I want to ask you guys, uh, between the porting face or the forever face, which one do you like more? <laughs> Pudding. <coughs> but only just. Both of them. They're very memorable. Eh. Because the the pudding just looks psychotic. There's Forever has this sort of wonder and childish delight. <laughs> I can't I can't make fun of it quite so easily. I have no preference. <laughs> There's another purpose to the scene hmm. that I think we are neglecting. Oh? Don't be neglecting, don't be hating. What what's that? What's what's one element of any heist movie? The hmm. plan? Yes, which Twilight's about to get to. But what about the antagonist in a in a in a uh, heist movie? Usually, that's the security. Is it? I don't know. My experience has been that the heist movie it always tries to add a bit of moral justification uh, to the thieves in that the person they're trying to steal from really isn't that nice. In all honesty, for me. I played PD the heist and PD two, so I don't really see that. <laughs> Are you totally nuts about PD? Yes, I used to play it hardcore. I used to play it too, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. Were yep. any of the were any of the beans you stole from you know people you didn't like? Yeah, here's the thing: the heisters and the people who we are stealing from are just bad people. So sometimes not even the security people. Like, they're just doing their job. <laughs> We're just the bad guys stealing from them. See, well, okay, I think that in video games, there's a little bit more leeway, but in heist movies, usually the owner is someone who is very cruel, selfish, prideful, someone you kind of want to see get humbled. Now, that's not quite the case here because it's shining armor, who is, you know, the antagonist of sorts. He's the force working against Twilight and crew. But even though he's not cruel, there is a note of pride in his uh, expression and demeanor as they come in and the first thing they see is him wearing uh, this tinfoil crown and the pride he puts. There's a slight antagonism there. Not cruel, but antagonism. So you want to see him bested. Which is where we get to the plan. And I, I can see what you mean. I can see what you mean. Because I'm just trying to remember a old show. Uh, this is uh, Starry Marky Mark. And that's uh, the Italian job. Seen that one before? I didn't get to see that movie. I did not. But is it similar to Ocean's Eleven? And that uh, whoever they were trying to steal from was someone the audience could kind of resent? Yeah. It's, it's something similar. Like you mentioned this and I just remembered. Because... 
uh, in the Italian job where st- starring Marky Mark, the scenario is this: Marky Mark and his crew and his mentor steal something, and they got away. The mentor backstabs them and well, left them for dead. In the end, the crew are going to steal back from the mentor and stuff. Ah, so there's a bit betrayal. I-, I can see what you mean by the humbling of the bad guys and so and for this one yeah i can see the scenario here where twilight wants to win the crown and also feed uh shining armor some humble pie yep just you know be sibling supreme Mm -hmm. but at the same time too uh this is also a challenge to twilight and her crew so this is going to be very interesting even more interesting when Shining Armor predicts all of Twilight's plans because, well, let's face it, after nine seasons, I'm sure just about everyone is picking up on her planning stages. Oh, that. And mm-hmm. talking about planning, let's hit into the next scene where Twilight plans all of her, well, uh, heists from Applejack's uh, strength to rarities, costume design to Rainbow Dash's speed to... Fluttershy's uh, talking to animals. Shyness. Yeah. And Pinkie Pie's party and so on. Like, everybody here has their strength and Twilight is using it to their best. But the problem is, before uh, Twilight can execute said plan, uh, Spike got the message from Shining saying, Yo, sis, I know what your plan is and you're going to use, well, for verbatim what I just mentioned. And, oh no, this is not good. So, what do? Um, did anyone understand a word of what Norman just said? Nope. Well, Sultan might. It. Yep, I, I it. figure you would. But I've, you know, I've known Norman for a while. So, you know, we, we, we got the bro bro communication going. <laughs> the, the bro uh, code? That, that in the We uh, got the whole... bro code. Wait, wait, did, that, that, did not, um, that did not came true? Like, eh. It was a little rambly. Ah, uh, all right. Basically, Twilight makes really good plans, but Shining Armor knows what she's doing before she's going to do it. And I, I do love Rarity, and her. she sees an opportunity to be awesome, and she shall have it. Yep. And who knew Rarity had that evil laugh? They can't even do what Silver just did. He rolled his tongue. <laughs> oh, yes, I like to roll my R's. I can't I roll my can. R's. It just sounds like I'm can choking you... here. <laughs> can you whistle? No. Well. Wow. But anywho, oh. oh sure, rub it in. Oh, I know, make crush my feelings even more. <laughs> I know you, you've got a wounded Torterra here. That was super effective in crushing the spirits. Uh, okay. but, but anywho, like Silver mentioned, Rarity here picks up the slack and says, "You know what? Let's do what Shining Armor does not expect of us, and we shall execute the plan." And said plan is well. Uh, Rarity and Rainbow Dash tries to do a shakedown. Pinkie Pie daydreaming about being in space. Applejack, oh boy, Applejack here is. <laughs> Still, you want to take this for a bit? I yes, because I so want this to be true. <laughs> I so want this to be a thing. Applejack has a career as a legendary performer, Apple Core, and I she it was gave cord. it up to stay. Like cord, like song thought, cord. That would make a lot of sense. Let's just check the Apple transcript, shall we? Yeah, it's Apple okay. cord. On I think the... it is Apple cord. Yeah. Really? I always heard it as Apple yeah, cord. Yeah, I heard that too. Let's see here. Uh, performer. Yep, they say Apple cord. Yeah, yeah, I was so right. My ear... But I heard... My ears are playing tricks on me. No, you... Well, that's even more clever. You, you, it's not, you're, yeah. you're not the only one because I heard core too. Well, maybe because I'm just... Uh... Old. Well... <laughs> okay, Sorry. Oh, she okay, said it. That was a little too harsh. <laughs> she said it, not me. <sighs> she did, and and she will pay for it. So how much is that now? But <laughs> uh, let's let's just say that I don't have to worry about buying dinner at BronyCon. But uh, okay, so it's apple cord, which is both funny, but now I can't make a Baltimore joke. <laughs> But uh, 
basically we've got this whole alter ego Hannah Montana <laughs> sort of life for Applejack, which I just find delightful. So when Rainbow Dash says, was any of that actually true? And I'm just like, please say yes, please say yes, please say yes, please say yes. <laughs> and she doesn't say no. So I'm taking it. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. So as you elegantly put it, Applejack has, Applejack in her youth was a country star singer. And what? <laughs> that came out of nowhere? Well, I mean, this makes her friendship with Ra Ra make so much more sense. But <laughs> I like how too though that she calls it her alter ego. Yeah, but how many of those do you think she has? Oh. Which Applejack am I talking to now? Oh God! Good question. <clears throat> True. Maybe we've got Applejack in her seven deadly ex careers. <laughs> but still, um, I I do like how. Rarity just stops the conversation saying, yes, darling, that's a good idea. We will go with that. And Fluttershy, what do you not like? Tight, small spaces. And Silver, um, Fluttershy in, uh, does Fluttershy remind you of anybody? Tom Cruise? Don't, no, don't, no, don't, no, don't, not, don't, not don't, him, not don't, him. Don't, don't. A, a, certain, a certain black cat, probably? Well, let's see here. There were the, Oh, what was the anime? Seven Deadly Sins? No, no. Before your time. I feel like, ah, th- there was a live action opening to it. Oh, I can't, what was Action it? Man. Norman, I love that you even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Anime Black Cat Thieves. I mean, there, oh, well, it doesn't help that Now, when you say cat. before my time, how old are we talking? I'm not entirely sure, actually. Because I know there's an anime called Black Cat. Yeah, but that's not the uh, that's not the anime I'm thinking of. This is for uh, three sisters who are thieves, son of three sister thieves, who are uh, the children of a famous thief. There was a live action Cat's Eye. Oh damn, that's what it was. All right, Cat's Eye. Yeah, but no, 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 Silver. But, something more closer to heart, or closer to this show's heart. Well, I mean, there's the sneaking suit we'll see later. Uh, I'm just saying Cat Noir. Well, yeah, it's a... Oh, for... <laughs> <laughs> Although, can I... I'm no, just going to say... <laughs> look, look Norman. At... Oh. Uh, well, no, no, Torterra, go ahead. I was say, look, looking back, it's like um, when you see... Wait, we got the part where we see Spike and Fluttershy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, at least they're not strapped onto, like, a kite or anything with the blindfold on, and they have something in their mouth and, like, a certain something we saw before. Yes! Yes, Norman, <laughs> that is the furthest thing from my mind right now, because this is sweet and wholesome and fun, and it doesn't make me feel uncomfortable, and I don't have to go, you're sick! You're sick! Because it's my little pony. Norman, what are you thinking? And yet... And yet there was the whole thing with the uh, vines back in season four. How wholesome is <laughs> this show? Well, the show is wholesome. I said nothing about the fan base. <laughs> oh, my God. I Norman. cannot wait for us to review uh, Starlight's Adventure. <laughs> Starlight's Adventure? Uh, hmm. Oh. Hmm? Oh, the cockatrices. Yep. Oh. <laughs> but, it, oh, oh, yeah, mod. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no. But no, the the fact that you're trying to link my favorite pony to Ladybug and Cat Noir, we shall have words later. Hey, I I, words. I am for I here for am for one with, uh, sorry, I am here for, uh, characters in tight outfits. They look great. Well, like well, Bayonetta. Learned something. Yeah. No, that's oh, not no. just the tight outfit. That's not just a tight outfit. <laughs> that's like uh, homegrown, if you know what I mean. Giggity. Oh, boys. But anywho, um... Oh, anywho, he says. <laughs> oh, he's trying to move yes, along. Yes, we're... From Bayonetta. We're 40 minutes in. embarrassed. I know, but, I know, but there's far too much to comment on this fun episode. And I'm making all of you uncomfortable. <laughs> Not really. I'm used to it. <laughs> Same. If anything, I've heard worse coming out of you guys. <clears throat> but anywho... Uh, oh, s- says you, Miss Potty Mouth. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um... In this daydream where Fluttershy explains her well, daydream, she is a very athletic spy type of person where, let's just say, this scene just is just awesome. 
If you're a Fluttershy fan... I thought you... Spike was explaining it. Or I, I think I don't they're know. both kind of explaining yeah. it. Well, I will admit, I was actually just a little disappointed with this fantasy for one reason. All those lasers... I wanted them to be coming out of the out of the <laughs> geese's eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, when I, I first just saw some... that scene, I thought it was coming out of the geese's eyes. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, all I wanted is some geese with some freaking lasers <laughs> on their heads. I you attach <laughs> laser beams to their freaking heads. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, we didn't get that. But still, it looks awesome. It sounds awesome. And well, Twilight says, "Okay, everybody has a plan. So, what do I do? What do I do, Rarity? What do I do?" And nothing. Yep. <laughs> and Twilight has a heart attack for a bit, but still, uh, they put the plan to action. And yeah, we we get to see Apple Cord performing her farewell tour and whatnot in Cantalot. And Shining Armor just says, "Applejack, what are you doing?" <laughs> I'm not Applejack. Says not Applejack. Uh, so she plays a song, and we get to see the other ponies put their plan to action where. Rainbow Dash explains that, hey, we have a flyby. Uh, the Wonder Boats need a flyby, and the only way to get in is into this spot. Don't mess up. And does it say that the plan goes according to plan? No, it doesn't. Oh, no. What what happened? No. No, 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 no. Well, let's start with things. One, Applejack probably didn't get double platinum status in her performance. That's just unfortunate. But somehow the balloon is burst, so Pinky never makes it to space. Sadness. <laughs> Uh, Rarity had all these perfect plans, but all oh, the shops are closed for at midday, which shows the Canterlot uh, economy is almost as bad as San Diego. No, <clears throat> I, I'm just thinking it says 3 p.m. And usually... Does it? Well, the time says 3. Well, is that we'll be back at? I think so, probably. And it is a bar. But, well, lucky for Rarity and Rainbow... The most helpful stallion comes along. I think Fancy Pants has some competition for best stallion in uh, Canterlot. Oh, uh, before we move on, uh, we just have I just have to point out that during all the commotion where Pinkie Pie's balloon uh, bursts and is flying all over Canterlot or the castle, uh, Applejack activates a machine that steals one of the guards' A key to enter the throne room. Yes. Which makes it the coolest guitar in history. Yep. <laughs> so I, I just have to point that out. I just have to point that out. Oh, it's, it's good. It also... One of my complaints of um, Uprooted mm-hmm. was that a lot of the failed attempts didn't really add something. You know, it, was, it wasn't the total... You could almost edit it out and not lose anything for the actual story. Here, the failed attempts do serve a purpose. True, true. Well, Applejack's plan was sound and solid. All she needed to do was distract the guards with her performance. Which, well, not going to plan, but she did. She she, she did. And even Pinkie Pie's defeat will serve a purpose. But then we get to uh, the guard. That needs distracting. And I can only assume that Ashley Ball just really wanted to mess with Rainbow Dash when she cooked this up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this But let's let's just say Zephyr Breeze as a member of the Royal Guard. What? Zephyr Breeze. What? <laughs> Meanwhile, yep. Flash Magnus is just drinking in a bar somewhere saying my life is a lie. <laughs> Oh, but no, I, I have to call shenanigans on this because for the story reason, yes, it's funny because we get to see what happens next. But for his development, it's kind of been cheapened, if you know what I mean. Yep. Well, yes and no. I could see him joining the Royal Guard saying, I'll be your main stylist. And somehow he got recruited instead into basic guard thanks to, well, what we'll learn later. Okay, But still, I mean... He was going to be a stylist. Like, he was on the road there. Even the comic books pick up on that. Uh, I know comic books are not canon, but still. Oh, I've heard that argument so many times on Equestria Daily's forums. It's I can't even anymore. <laughs> Norman, but I it's can't. true. I just can't. Uh, Norman, why are you just, bringing this up? Just leave him to his pain, Norman. 
First, first you bring up Ladybug and Cat Noir now this. Norman, why are you doing me a distress? Because the fan love to see you in distress. Ah. That's why Brody can't put you or toilet way far. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Even though you're a community guest. I know. <laughs> but, uh... I at least my discomfort can never match Rainbow Dash's. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, the, the way that Rainbow just explains, oh my god, is that breeze? No, I do not like this. This uh, like he, <laughs> she just explaining how she likes him. I hate him, and there's no way. And Rarity just says, "Girl, we couldn't have asked for a better distraction." I'm just waiting for Rainbow Dash to straight up say, Ah, boys, they think no means yes, and yes means take me, I'm yours. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I'm wow, just you, waiting you, uh... for some kind of Megara quote. Not from us. I meant from Rainbow. I don't, even, I don't even know what that show you just said is. Okay. It, it's from the movie Hercules. Ah. Oh, Hercules. She okay, looks that like I do Meg. Know. Oh! Oh! Okay. Yeah! Oh! Well, yeah! Said, now that I, you pointed out. Yeah! I've been I, saying that all along. She looks like Meg. You thought you were talking about Rainbow Dash, but it was me, Megara. I mean, the hairstyle and everything. Like just. just no, you, man. you have like the images pulled up, right? Yeah, yeah. Now that you <laughs> mentioned it, yes. Now that you mentioned it, yes. Same style. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that you mentioned it. Yes. The exact same hairstyle. Close. But still, now that you mentioned it, yes. But still. I thought when you said it, I thought. No, I was quoting. I was quoting Hercules, like the Disney movie. Yeah, but but you're. It sounded like you were pronouncing your M as an N. Oops. (laughs) Well. Well, we know know. I'm not good at speaking. I thought I well. I don't know. I might not be good at listening. Apple core to Apple core. It's all a madhouse. I tells you. And talking about a madhouse, um, Zeppo Reese sees Rainbow Dash and tries to put on the charm. Oh God! <laughs> Rule zero for charisma. Uh, let's just see that um, Zephyr here is smitten with uh, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity goes up to the. Uh, seal passageway and removes the brick, brick by brick. Wow, can't believe that worked. Well, Rainbow's dignity is a small price, apparently. How how do I put this to the others at home? We here cannot do justice with this scene. You you guys have to rewatch it again just to look at how cringy this moment is, and not in the spike at the friendship games. This is a good kind of cringe. No touchy. <laughs> Though I will give props to whoever designed the armor. That thing is flexible. Right, I know. Look when when he's uh, striking a pose, looking around, flinging his mm. head back. That armor just segments and flows with him. Oh, yeah. Looks awesome. But anywho, uh, while Zephyr is taking his pose... By the way, does this does this part where he's posing does it remind you of anyone? Because I'm trying to think, was it the Emperor's new groove? You threw off my groove. Emperor. Emperor's new groove, Zoolander, and the posing. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Like, is it there? But yeah, could be anything. Anywho, yeah. so Rarity and Rainbow goes into the secret passage and well tries to find something. I got no idea why they're doing that. Meanwhile, we see Spike and Fluttershy break into the throne room and, well, kind of succeeding until they get caught by a swan or a geese. Sorry, geese. And fall in... Yeah, the swan won't be tormentors until later. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they f- fail and fall through the trap door. Princess Luna comes in saying, Sister, there's another false alarm. Ugh. I just have to say, this geese security system it's not a good plan it's just silly and dumb well they do bite i'm sure that that is some part of added security but uh honestly i wonder if this just wasn't shining armor's attempted pest control <laughs> you know if there was like a, a a plague of pigeons in the area he'd recruit them 
probably. Uh, but still, Twilight sees the plan in action and, well, everything's failing. Um, there's no news report from either Fluttershy or Spike, Rainbow Dash or Rarity. Uh, the balloon's broken, so there's no lookout. Uh, Applejack's finished performing. And yeah, this is a failure. This is a failure. But thank goodness for Spike. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, one, we get that this great heart-to-heart between him and Fluttershy. Again, showing how even the failed attempts serve a purpose. Character development. True that. And uh, Spike just explains that, yeah, whenever, when I was a baby dragon living with these sparkles, I always thought myself as a sibling, but I don't think they see it that way. And Fluttershy just says, um, sibling dynamics are hard. I should know. <laughs> I think she's got it worse. Yeah. Yeah. And siesta. <laughs> and yeah, while they're bonding, uh, Rainbow Dash and Rarity stumbles upon a what you call this lever, and Rarity just says that Rainbow Dash, could you not do that? You might activate a trap. And Rainbow Dash says, "Or a hidden passage. We have to take the risk." And they just banter back and forward. Until, wait, they realize, wait, you guys failed too? Oh god, this is not good. Let's report back to Twilight. And once they do, Twilight says, oh god, this is not working, this is not working. Spike just goes up and says, you know, we should have gone with your plan. I think it's still good time to do it, shall we? And they do. So they go to the original plan of Twilight's plan. And yay, Pinkie Pie does the party, uh, breaks rarity in, uh, Rainbow Dash flies around and gets them into the uh, castle. And the next part here where the contractor is sealing up the passage again. And and Applejack just says, like, uh, Twilight, I know I'm strong, but I don't think I can buck through solid stone. And Twilight just says, no problem, I call in an expert. And it's Maud. Yay, awesomeness. Yay for cameos. Yay, indeed. (coughs) So, Maud just marks a spot where, stating that, okay, this is the spot you should buck to break the rock. And they do, and they go in. And everything goes to plan, like Rarity distracts a guard telling him that that is break time and changing of shift. Uh, she opens the window to let Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy in. Once they're in, uh, Fluttershy puts on her charm and tells the others that, sorry, tells the geese that, oh, don't you want to have a feather massage? And with that, well, thing goes to plan and the crown is just a, well, hop skip and jump away but before she could do that shining armor busts in saying haha nice try sis but uh, a bit too slow close but no cigar kind of scenario well I gotta call yeah gotta that call was, that's not a word oh, oh. It's pitchy. yeah you may as well add and just read about it anyways I've got a yeah I think we're both calling baloney because this requires that shining armor or at least some member of the card always be hiding behind the throne just in case. I mean I I got I got to say that's that's a load of hooey. But I think the 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 deciding factor or the moment when they hit behind the throne is when things goes according to Twilight's plan because whenever Shining was around looking at scenarios she sees at first she sees Applejack this couldn't be Twilight's plan and she goes up to sorry he goes up to Twilight and says what are you planning because that's a point where things don't go according to how Shining would have predicted so he had to cheat (laughs) not really because he's always keeping an eye out on Twilight like in the very first moment when Applejack performs he goes up to Applejack and says, what are you doing? And then he goes up to Twilight when she was sniffing flowers. Once things got to plan with Pinkie Pie's party, okay, that's the signal where I need to hide behind the throne. Aha. Uh-huh. 
which is terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, that was frustrating. <laughs> see, I'm yeah, I'm gonna call this. It, this whole thing is based on trying to test candle out security. So unless you're willing to stand behind that throne twenty four seven, it's not a real part of your defenses. Unless there's like a new guard shift. Okay, you've got behind the throne duty, and I should warn you, Celestia had beans oh, for lunch. No. So hold your, <laughs> hold hold your breath. Well, not only that too. Say someone very strong and powerful was to break in, then what's that one guard that's going to hide behind the chair going to do? <laughs> Ooh, I am the ghost of Cantalot Castle. <laughs> Be gone from my presence, Invader. Ooh, ooh. Oh, scary. That would work. That would be funny. <laughs> If that was if that was the final counter guard, and it actually worked, that might actually be a fun episode. <laughs> Probably, but no. Um, Shining comes in boasting about how oh, your plan would have worked, but I already know everything you, that you were going to do. And Celestia trots in saying, "I'm sorry, Twilight, but uh, you didn't win, and your brother has an awesome defense stuff." But before she could declare Shining Armor the winner, Spike just says, You know what, guys? Looks can be deceiving. And pulls out the crown and puts it on his head. Huzzah! And they're shocked. All of them are shocked at this. Like, but how? Like, what? 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 And Spike just says, I have a little help from the inside. And reveals to everyone that haha it was Luna and she's petting a geese menacingly creating the single greatest image in my little pony's yes. history <laughs> yes yes so uh, the so Spike just explains that hey um, I noticed that Luna was not happy with the decision and she, while Shining is just babbling on about his plan I went up to Luna and struck a deal. And yeah, she was the one that put uh, Zephyr in charge of the catacombs. Uh, She was the one that distracted or kind of shoo away Celestia from the throne room. And once that was done, all Spike had to do was just put everything to plan just to make sure that everybody was following Twilight's plan. And when... Shining was distracted. Luna just ported the crown to me, and yay, I won! Yes, huzzah! He is sibling supreme forever. Indeed. But at the same time, too, the sister Spike gets all the tendies. <laughs> True, but at the same time, too, uh, it seems that the sister may need to do a one-on-one, a tete-a-tete, just to well get to know each other or just be nice to each other and stuff it's with those grins that say this is not yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still the, the ending was pretty awesome because Rainbow Dash asked so if Twilight and Shining didn't get the crown so who's the winner of the true sibling supreme and Twilight just declares Spike you are the winner and we uh, what's the word? Um, the little brother we always had. Ah, group hug. Honestly, it's kind of weird. Like when you hear it, like, "Oh yeah, he's our little brother." I always saw it as like a mother son relationship in a way. <laughs> you know that that debate has been around <laughs> for a Twilight while now. Basically, no, I mean, that's Twilight true. It's true. Raised him. <laughs> it is true, but the debate there has been going on for a while now. I mean, you you have the dynamic of brother sister with Twilight and Spike, you have that mother-son kind of dynamic too. But there's also the dynamic of where most of the time Celestia's taking care of Spike. I mean, there's a lot. Uh, I've never seen Celestia take care of Spike. In fan fiction, but yeah, still. Right. I mean, I know in fanfics? Yes. I know, but still. the fanfic defense. Objection, Your Honor, he's using the fanfic defense. Yeah, but comic books are non-canon. It's beat here. Comic books, even in the comics that show Twilight taking care of Spike when I know. she was a f- little filly. I did, I'm sorry, Norman, but I have not seen Celestia do diddly squat uh, to properly raise Spike. Even though at one point, I think 
I've heard that Lauren Faust's idea was that Spike would be considered Celestia's <laughs> son, and she'd even call him such. But still, that's just an idea. Anywho, it, we, it's just a yes. theory. A no. game theory. Don't ever say then from manga common. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I've always considered Spike to be the little brother for Twilight. She's just a very matronly older sister. Mm, true that, true that. But still, th- this is one of those episodes where we can talk a lot about it. I think we did. So anywho, um, I'm going to wrap this up. Everybody gets a group hug and Spike is the winner. Yay! Awesomeness. So let's go to comparisons from episode 100 to this one. Uh, I think Sappy says she likes 100 better. No. Oh. Opposite. Ah, all right. So you like this one better. All right. So, Silver, where's your standing? This one or uh, 100? Well, it's a, it's a tough sell as a comparison because they're so wildly different. Episode 100 celebrated the fandom. This one celebrated the vocal talent. I will say this one is more cohesive as a plot because it's a more focused group, whereas uh, Slice of Life was several uh, disjointed stories with a centering around a wedding, which is what works. And here, uh, we're back to the appeal of heist movies. You have an antagonist who is uh, proud and you want to see humbled. You have this group of very talented individuals that you want to see how their diverse talents will come together and uh, achieve the desired outcome. And also there's... This is kind of funny, but part of the reason Ocean's Eleven was so much fun is because it was very big name actors. Oh. It was a gathering of celebrated, you know, personalities, just like with the main six, whom we've gotten to enjoy these eight and a half seasons thus far. I think if you if you push me to choose, I am more a fan of this than Slice of Life because it is the characters I know mm-hmm. more. But it was fun uh, in Slice of Life to see uh, all these background characters become more complete. All right, all right. I, 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 see what you, I see what you mean. And Tara? Honestly, Silver said everything I would have said. Like, I'm, I'm more towards episode, uh, this episode more than Slice of Life 2 because, like, like he said, Slice of Life is more of an f- episode for the fandom. And, like, we've, we've grown with these characters ever since season one. I mean, well, I've been watching MOP since season two, but then I went back to season one. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is that we've been growing up with these characters for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. So, I'm guessing I'm the only one that likes 100, then. Is there a reason? Well, we like 100. I mean, we do. I mean, uh, what, what I mean by that is, like, compared to... If we're doing a comparison, like, I, I like 100 more because of the whole dynamic of the group or the story because we get to see uh, certain characters have voices for the first time. We get to see shenanigans that don't really normally happen. But in terms of an overarching storyline, 200 is better. But I I just like 100 because of all the fan shoutouts and even the music. I, I think what bothered me for 200 was we didn't get a quote-unquote musical. As I'm not musically inclined, I, I can't say that was... I didn't really miss the opportunity for a musical. I mean, not really in terms of a full-blown soundtrack or a full-blown musical number. It's just like, remember the part where Vinyl and Octavia were playing a song? Like, this one in here, they could have done like the sneaky soundtrack or something like that. I mean, they could have done a lot. Or montage, something like that. But, nah. That's me. Probably it's not needed. Well, there was that very very brief excerpt from Apple Chords performance. This is a country song. It's gonna be very long. (laughs) Isn't that Yak Song? (laughs) Well, that's what Yak Song. Very long. (laughs) Sing again. (laughs) Oh, boys. But, yeah, um... Let's go to final thoughts. So, Silver. Well, like I said, this this is a delight. It it taps into what makes heist movies so fun and turns it on its ear just enough to serve the My Little Pony formula. And it's like it's just fun. Love the dynamic of the characters. Love how each of them 
makes an attempt at uh, solving this and the ensuing hilarity. Love Zephyr and Maud's cameos, and of course, great. My favorite princess, of course, has the greatest scene. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, dear sister, you have a nasty habit of surviving. <laughs> Honestly, and Silver, you might be happy to hear this. I think I've been liking Luna a lot more like lately than I have Celestia. <laughs> oh, you're coming over to the Luna side again? Yes. Again. Well, I did have a Luna side when I was, like, you know, starting out, but then I grew more like Celestia, and now my preference is kind of towards Luna. Mm. Uh, (laughs) Ah, the tides are turning. Yes. The tides are turning. Well, when we get to Between Dark and Dawn, I will have another study. Mm -hmm. But anywho, uh, Silver, is that it? Yeah, that's it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed, loved it, glad for it, glad for the voice actresses who make it possible, and of course, uh, Zephyr Breeze for Guard of yeah. the Year, because he was actually, he at least had personality. Oh, true that, true that. Uh, but anywho, uh, Safi, what about you? Oh boy, this episode. Uh, <laughs> it's just so fun to watch like I think the jokes in this episode were just on point I after this episode I don't think I've laughed as hard as I did over not my little pony episode until this in such a long time <laughs> it's just so on point with with its characters it went down a direction I don't think anyone would have guessed it at first you know true that true that I understand what you mean like, especially with Rarity becoming, like, the main boss man in this, like, at first. Like, yeah, it kind of went towards, okay, let's just stick with what we know. But even then, just the failures were the most entertaining part. Mm-hmm. I understand, I understand. And That's pretty much all I have to say. No problem. And Tara, what about you? I really like this episode. I liked it from the beginning to the end. I like the comedy. I like the action. I like the mystery. Like... I didn't watch the the behind-the-scenes thing, so I didn't get spoiled, but I like when an episode or even a movie surprises me, and you think that... uh, Like, I was thinking, okay, you know what? Maybe at the end, Twilight will say, hey, you cheated this, not blah, 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 and then she'll get the crown, but then, nope, Spike was the one that got the crown. I'd be like, wow, did not see that coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say that... Mm. I have to agree with you there. Like, that twist ending there, like, hmm, okay, yeah. And, yeah, I'm going to say for my part... (laughs) So, you done, Tara? Yep, All I'm right. done. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun from beginning to end. I, I just enjoyed the whole thing, even though I like 100 better for other reasons. But still, like you guys mentioned, it's like comparing apples and oranges. Both have their positive and negatives. But for this one, I, I like the dynamic where, yeah, this is a heist movie. So, the main six are trying to pull off a heist. It, it's fun it's a lot of fun and silliness and we will never know if applejack was telling the truth or not like what she didn't say no and she did perform on stage (laughs) and the ending there like i i was not expecting that you know honestly i was not expecting that i I was expecting some kind of uh last minute shenanigans where um Starlight came in, stopped time, and took the crown for Twilight or something like that. Who knows? Or maybe there was that a That would have been funny. Or there could have been a goose uprising. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what? Like, Starlight could have joined. Or, you know what? To have another twist ending, Twilight could have uh, called Sunset. Ooh. <laughs> or if you want to have a really twist ending. What? Turns out Twist got it. <laughs> yeah, she's back. Yep. Uh, but anywho, that that is this episode. Like I say, go watch it. This is up there in fun episodes to watch. Yes. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode review? Well, we're gonna step away from Pony for just a little bit. I believe this is a Patreon sponsored request. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it, unlike uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir, it won't terrify me on quite the same level. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Because it's Little Witch Academia, where it talks about all the fun ways you can celebrate uh, a witch hunt. 
Yeah. Yep. To, to be more specific, we are going to review Little Witch Academia, The Enchanted Parade, the second movie for uh, the Little Witch series. So yeah. We, there was a first movie? Yes. It's called Little Witch Academia. Well, that's just confusing. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Silver, don't remind me of the time when we tried to review <laughs> Little Witch. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh you're blaming me that. for this? You're blaming me for no, that? No, Come no, on. no, no. I'm just saying that, okay, you know what? This is going, we're going to stop here because I think we should open with that when we review this one. But so, anywho, um, that will be next week's thing. And yeah, stick around for that. But anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themusergmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBA Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same title, uh, doing Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight. And you can find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday as I do comic reviews. But at the time of at the time we're doing this podcast, I've only got one more comic to do for the backlog. That's a weird, a weird feeling. Oh wow, yeah. Like the wait. Oh wow, you 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 are kind of up to date with every comic release. So there's no, yeah. You you'll be on parody then. I'll be on parody. Yeah, uh, like one to one. Whenever a comic's out, you review it and stuff. So there's nothing left for you to do except for character analytics and so on. Yes. yes, but hey, that's part of the adventure. True, but uh, and of course, you can find me on YouTube under MLP uh, under uh, Silver Quill or After the Fact. Just do a search for one or the other, and I shall appear. And I believe this podcast will come out just in time to say you can find me at BronyCon as both a community guest and a vendor. I'm in booth uh, two hundred one, I believe, which is on yes. the opposite side of the room from the bathroom. So if I'm walking through at a rather brisk pace, please don't stop me. Oh, no. I mean, won't stop you. You know people are going to stop you anyway, right? Because I, it's Silver Quill. Oh, my gosh. I'm just saying that, you know, I might, need to, I might have a very, very timely agenda at play. So please don't think that I don't want to talk to you. It's just that I need to take care of something else first. Ah! Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> <and> Silver <laughs> Quill's ignoring me. My dreams have been crushed. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've seen 2019, the year where Silver Quill really needed to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, it is not my goal to crush dreams. Uh, I'm just saying that if you guys do meet Silver, say hello, talk to him for a very long time, and just tell him how much you enjoy his work, the podcast, and whatnot, and Talk to him about Fluttershy. He'll enjoy that. Fluttershy and Luna. Just don't follow him to the bathroom because that's just creepy. <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't argue with that. Yeah, if you do do that, I don't think BronyCon would like that. Oh, no. Norman, you said doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't say party. Wait, why am I laughing? That's going on my account. <laughs> uh, City Boy's going to do extra work today. Oh, boys. But anywho, I said also, look. I think that's plenty. I think I've traumatized enough people uh, with my humor this episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Seppi, where can people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, Twitter. Basically, just search up the name Anime Christie. And also be sure to donate me at coffee.com. Because dang it, I'm gonna need... I'm, I'm gonna need some donations to help pay off this debt. Also, I'm also vending at BronyCon with my boyfriend Manga Common. We are at table 29 in the artist alley. Awesome, awesome. Which is actually really close to the bathroom. Well, for the male bathroom, not for the female bathroom. You, you still need to do a gently jog like Silverwood. Oh okay. yeah, you're right. <laughs> mine, mine is not a, a gentle jog. It's more of a power walk. <laughs> <laughs> and trying not to poop your pants. <laughs> you know, there this thing called adult diapers. I'm gonna pretend you didn't just suggest that. <laughs> I believe I'm at least forty years uh, out from having to rely on that. Thank you. Okay, I'm just stating because people in the comments might suggest something like that. I, you don't I mean, need to you state. To. You're in a state of confusion right now, Norman. 
<laughs> that, that is also true. Adult diapers, indeed. I never. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> yes. I don't. How did we reach this point? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't even want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324, or they could also just simply do a Google search of my name. And I guess since everyone's doing it, although I won't be a community guest, and I won't be Vendoran because I'm not that special. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I will be also be at BronyCon, just uh, enjoying the convention. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And for you guys at home, um... Uh, a quick update I will not be at BronyCon because I'm no community guest and I don't live in the uh, Northern Americans so yeah uh, I'm sad <laughs> oh, I'm sad it's okay Norman you'll be with us in spirit oh uh, yes I- I'll be there in spirit <laughs> and I'll be praying that my Dokimakura sell wait you have that really? <laughs> yep I I actually do have Dokimakuras that are being made ah, of <laughs> in time for brownie cat. Which, which character? That's, that's the important one. Which character? Sunset and Twilight and Starlight and Trixie. No Bayonetta? No Bayonetta. <laughs> I mean, if anything, the lovely people that encountered one of us at BonyCon can post it up on Twitter and be like, look, Norman, I found one of the people on your crew. Yay, that'll be awesome. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, I remember that one. Oh, you you did that to me way back when. Yeah, I was the one. I got a picture of all three of us together, and I shared it with awesome, you. Awesome, awesome. Uh, how times change. But anywho, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MPS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank yous I would like to thank Amy Lucky Knight Tristan Starstream Jeffrey and also myself like thank you so much guys you are great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I am Cecil Bequil I am a Safi and I am a Torterra and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show see ya adios bye bye later Wait, what? Oh no, you do not just ding and then not explain why that was a ding. Well, I just figured that, uh, you know, Safi, you could pay a little extra for the road. <laughs> it's called the departure tax. But, but I'm... But, 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 but... Oh, oh, she keeps saying but. That's a lot of buts. <laughs> I'm gonna about- be broke by the time I earn anything at BronyCon. Goodbye, college. I won't be able to attend you this year. <sighs> she likes to talk about butts and she cannot lie. You others can't deny.